Hey, data engineers, welcome back to another video in this series on clout, building out a YouTube data analysis system. Okay, in this video, what we are going to do is build out this little bouquet visualization that is right here. What's, what's nice is that you have all these hovering tool tips. We will do that. We will do that and we will uh, take our CSV of YouTube trending, uh, trending videos and bring it into an IPython notebook and now analyze it with pandas. So stick around and we'll dive in. Okay, before we get started, I just wanted to say um, I appreciate all your subscriptions and um, likes and comments on the videos. I look forward to seeing those. Uh, it's great um, knowing that these videos are beneficial to people. So if you like these videos, uh, please give a like. If you have ideas for what we should be doing in the future for what this YouTube data analysis system could be, uh, let me know in the comments and, um, you know, we might do a future video on, on what you suggest. Okay. So we are going to analyze this CSV that we have of trending YouTube videos. This is going to be old trending videos by the time you're watching this. Uh, but what we have is we've downloaded the CSV, uh, using a, um, a GitHub library that we found that would go through and actually download. Uh, trending videos. So this is our CSV of trending videos data. It's not up to date. We will make it up to date uh, in other videos automatically. But what we are going to do is go to our IPython notebook, which you can start by just running IPython in your terminal. Uh, if you, or once you have it installed for me, it's, it looks like this when it's running. It automatically opens a window and you can make a new notebook. Uh, this is going to be uh, Python 3, 3, 6, I think is what I'm on. Okay, so here's my notebook. Uh, PWD gives me my current working directory. I can see what's in my directory. I have a notebooks directory. I'm gonna import pandas as PD. It's our typical way of starting this out. And then just the data frame is reading the CSV. Now, immediately I, I run into some errors here with the Unicode uh, decoding. So there are really strange characters in those YouTube videos. The coding isn't UTF-8. So I need on this read CSV another kind of encoding. Turns out ISO 8859-1 was the recommended encoding on a Stack Overflow answer. So that's what I went with in order to get this data into a pandas data frame. And once it's there, you could use uh, dataframe.head to get some information about what, what we actually have here. So we have the video ID, the title, uh, channel title, the YouTube category ID. We'll come back to that. The tags, the views, the likes, the dislikes. Uh, the thumbnail and other other met metadata, uh, the description. Now with uh, with pandas, what you could do is you, if this output is a lot for you, you could set the n. You could set this uh, to whatever you like using df dot shape here. That will tell us that we have two hundred rows uh, with sixteen columns. I'm going to import numpy as np. I could probably move this up to the to the top level, but uh, just to import it right now. And then I'm going to turn these uh, views and likes uh, into their log format. If we just take a, a little describe on this data frame before we move in here, what we're going to see is that uh, there's large discrepancies between um, the minimum, let's say, which is e to the five and the max, which is e to the seven. So once, if we tried to graph this, you'd have these like really large outliers, actually data all over the place because these numbers are just so large. What I want to do is graph view count and likes and, um, the relate, a lot of relationships are linear in the log format. So if I use numpy.log, create new variables, 
the log of the view count and the log of the likes. What that will allow me to do uh, when we graph this is, is see a linear relationship. And how I'm going to graph this is with bouquet. I'll just do a very straightforward figure. Before I do the log likes and log view count, just to make my point, I will just do likes and view count on this figure. So the bouquet, um, let me get rid of this. Bouquet is really straightforward Python plotting library, beautiful, easy to use right out of the box. And so we just uh, instantiate a fig and then plot some circles with a source. Our source is our data frame. And these are the columns in the data frame, likes and views. And this comment that out code will make the chart prettier. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second. But basically, all you need to, to make a basic chart in Bokeh is uh, instantiate a figure, uh, figured out circle, your columns, likes, views, your source, which is our data frame. And this should, if once we show the figure, actually show it in a chart. So a lot of your charts throughout school, maybe growing up, look like this, where you have large clusters over on the left, large outliers um, that you're trying to understand, right? A lot of my charts in my... Um, in my time making charts have looked like this. So we know there are a lot of outliers, right? We know that these are outliers. You could see it in this relationship, but it doesn't give us a lot of information about these clusters here. Actually, this is just kind of annoying to look at. Okay, so if instead, um, I plot the views here, let me see. So we have the, <clears throat> instead of I plot the log form of these variables, what I see instead is a nice linear relationship between uh, the likes and views. The outliers are still outliers, but now we now we're in log space, so so it's linear in log space, and it makes for a nice nicer viewing uh, a nicer viewing experience. Okay, so you saw what that chart looked like. Nothing great, but an easy way to to plot and look at relationships. So I'm going to uncomment this and talk through it. This is essentially what you just saw, but I'm going to I'm going to pretty it up. I'm going to I'm going to add a few lines of code to really customize this and make it useful. The first thing that I'm going to do is add tool tips, which are when you hover over the circle will give you some data underlying it. Title, channel title, view count, title channel views. Um then I just plug that list uh, of tuples into uh, into the figure right here. So that's really easy. That'll add tooltips. Now, adding in access labels and coloring the glyphs. The glyphs are essentially the, the circles, the, the data points. But adding access labels are really straightforward. And then adding the glyph is really straightforward. Um, you might see in examples that this fig isn't fig, it's like p, and then they do p equals fig.circle. I need to separate these out so that I can isolate the glyph, which is the p.glyph, right? So all that's to say is if you're um, working with a figure and you get like no attribute glyph, you, you come back to this video and um, see how to resolve it by making the figure its own variable and the glyph, the circles, their own variables. And you can play with things, right? You can play with size. I'm just gonna make that 15. You could fill alpha, which is the opacity, how see-through uh, the colors are. You have the fill of the uh, the data point and the line color around it. You can make um, a line dash and a line width. Uh, so let's see what all of that does. It happens really fast, and I think this is a big improvement. So you get to see now on here, hopefully this is coming through, the title, the channel, and the views, right? Um, PewDiePie is 
perhaps I think he's the biggest YouTuber and, um, you know, so on the X axis we have likes. So he has the top likes here and also among the top views on these trending videos, the Spider-Man, <clears throat> the Spider-Man trailer had more, but it's hard to, hard to follow the Spider-Man trailer. Right. So, okay. Then on the other side, you have Country Horse wins Kentucky Derby after historic disqualification on trending from CBS. And that has uh, many fewer views. So we're talking 400,000 to the top video from, let's say, from Spider-Man having, what is that, five over 5 million. So 400,000 to over 5 million. That's the range that we're dealing with. It's really large. Okay, so um, that's the figure. Uh, really easy to make. Just a few lines and you have a really customized figure. Getting back to the data analysis though, um, we can group by category ID. Remember we, we went to the category ID and we went in doing by count. What I get here is the count by category ID of these top trending videos with 24 hat the <clears throat> category 24 having 62 videos here followed by 10 and 17. So what do these categories mean? I found on a website, I, th I think it's, I think this is correct, but it didn't come from YouTube directly. I'm not sure where YouTube lists out what their categories explicitly are, but 24 is entertainment, which seems right. 17 and 10, 17 is sports and 10 is music. So entertainment, sports, and music, no surprise, really. Uh, 23 and 22. 23 is comedy. 22 is people and blogs. So no, well, there, there's gaming. Let's see, 19, travel. Um, okay, so 29. 29 isn't re represented. Nonprofits and activism. So this call out to make an, a trending nonprofits and activism video. I'm just going to select the entertainment rows themselves. And how I like to do this typically is to make a new data frame. So I do that by um, selecting the specific category. You can sort by view count. If you do ascending false, then you'll get the top videos first, right? So Peter Parker, Spider-Man, we saw that. Um, then the next one turned out to be it chapter two official teaser trailer okay and then after that spending 24 hours in a city with no laws that that sounds kind of interesting so these are all of the entertainment videos and they're um and so we can compare amongst the entertainment videos last to sink wins ten thousand dollars challenge Okay, that's that's pretty interesting. A lot of these are kind of interesting. So if we wanted to compare just among the entertainment category, this is this one way to do it. So if I want to check out what the view count data type is, you could just use uh, data frame, column, D type. Then I could just do a describe just on this individual data frame and I get this scientific notation which is kind of annoying to me I'd like to remove it so I can understand what these views and likes actually means and how to do that is um, pandas options display float format will display will suppress will turn these sign the scientific notation into floats and if I run the the describe again what I see is that in the entertainment category you need the, these trending videos had at minimum uh, over 330,000 views and at minimum over, at minimum 3,400 likes. Okay, but the maximum here at 53 million views is a long way. So I was wrong before when I said 5 million, it's 50 million views. Um, large range of views and likes and, and over 2.3 million likes um, in the trending videos. So we only need uh, over 300,000 views on this video to get it to trending. 
And I'm not sure what category this would be in. That's kind of interesting. Um, how to, I guess, maybe education. So uh, what else can we do? I think the last thing that I'd like to try is to get uh, the minimum. So let's see, entertainment um, view count dot minimum. No, that's not gonna do it. The series has no minimum. Let's see, min. Okay, right. So in the future, if we wanted to turn this into, um, you know. <clears throat> so what we could do is if we wanted to automate reporting of this um, amongst the trending entertainment videos for this date and I forget the date um, uh, the uh, lowest trending number of views was dot format no oh okay I want Python 3 so print is a function Tuple index out of range. Oh. Dot format min entertainment uh, dot views. Get the view count. Okay, so I wrote, um, just wrote this quick sentence and then automatically. Uh, filling it in, right? So this is how you can start almost building out an automated reporting system or you could build out a notebook that has all of this, um, these analysis and then all you need to do is update the data and then you start getting a report that you can generate whenever you need it. Okay, that's all we have time for today. But uh, essentially what we did is just summarize these, uh, these trending video data sets um what you could do from here is to analyze the the tags and the descriptions that's something i want to do in an upcoming video to figure out what are the attributes what are the tags of these really high trending videos maybe by category uh, so that's what we're going to do in in later videos coming out um, again if you have ideas comments uh please leave them for me this is uh, this work that we're doing is on growthtesttube.com. Uh, so you could look at the latest and greatest up there right now. We are still very much building it out, uh, but, but it is getting, it will, uh, get better over time. All right. Thanks for watching and, um, happy data engineering.